you know, I'm just, I'm just thrilled for our guys. Uh, obviously, it's been a long stretch. Um, they, you know, I, I begged and pleaded for them not to quit. Uh, I know we've made improvement. It hasn't showed in wins and losses, but, you know, we, we've become a competitive team. We're probably at times earlier we weren't. Some of that we've had some continuity, the same guys in there. Um, you know, it, it, it definitely has, has helped us. But I think today, I, my whole thing was, one, the preparation, the, the scout, Coach Southwell, uh, they, they were locked into it. And, uh, you know, that was my first thing. And I, I called, ironically, I called Shane late uh, after the Kansas game, and I said, what do we need to do? And he said, we need to score, Coach. And I said, to be honest, Shane, we need to stop them because if they score – we're not, we haven't scored all year. We're not going to have a chance to win. So we did shoot a lot the next, uh, next day. We did work on offense, but we also, I, I kind of made sure I talked them about uh, really being prepared. And we did a lot of good things. I, the first time we played them, we did a, a lot of good things. We just didn't make enough plays or shots, especially when we got it close. Um, you know, so that was, and then just being consistent. I thought, and then the last thing was just focus on being self-disciplined and, and being selfless. And I thought our guys uh, really bought into trying to win the game. And you got to give – I know you just had Selton on. Uh, he, he just made a decision. And I've kind of, you know, begged them to you – can, you can guard Selton. You're, you're big time. And, you know, he, he took the challenge. Coach Southwell challenged him. Uh, he did a great job on, on Nemhart, uh, you know, our team, but he made him earn it. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, and and then I thought, uh, you know, so that focus on just on that, and then guess what happens? He gets a layup. He gets a three uh, big plays. Uh, Mike McGurl was, you know, he's got a couple threes down early. Uh, great line, 16-9, I think is his career high, five assists. Um, and he guarded Miles and did a, great, a really good job on Miles, too. He's three for 13, and Nemhart's three for 11. So um, just those two guys stepped up defensively. But it was a team win because we had to have everybody make plays. Um, you know, just we got we actually got some fast breaks in the second half, and we haven't had a lot of those. Uh, those were important. And then we didn't get to the line much, uh, none in the first half. But then when down the stretch, we definitely made the free throws. Uh, which were, you know, we got the stops and free throws. I don't think they scored a field goal in the last five or six minutes. So we did a lot of good things. But I'm, it's a, the players win games. Uh, they found a way to win it. Happy for them, proud of them. Uh, but now we got to now we got to worry about Oklahoma and see if we can come and have that same consistent effort and focus. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll get uh, first question. We'll go to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, congrats on the win. Um, I mean, I know you've been a part of lots of wins over your career, but can you put into words just how fulfilling it is to be a part of a group that's been through the struggles they have to finally persevere here? Yeah, I mean, again, I just said I'm happy for them. And, and Mike, and, you know, I, there were, I told you guys there were tears in the locker room after Kansas. They wanted it so bad. Probably, you know, you, you worry, you wonder about the shooting. You know, is it you're, too, you're so tight? And then and, and that's why you don't don't make shots. And, and the last thing I did right on the board and I I just said, enjoy the opportunity. And I put smiley faces on the on the board. And, you know, and I told Mike today, you know, relax, uh, enjoy and just don't force the issue. And I think for the most part, he, he did a good job of that. So it's again, I'm just I'm happy for them because they're they they're the ones that have it's not easy. Uh, you know, it's not easy on us, but. It definitely has not been easy on them. Where do you think the guys got the the calm or the collectedness, whatever word you want to use for it, there in the last five minutes to to put the game away? You know, the one huddle we we were struggling. It was I think they got that four point lead when Nimard hit that three, and uh, and we had had some not good possessions. Uh, we just we 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 didn't execute. They were you know we were both fighting our butts off and. Um, in that one huddle, I just said, guys, you, you, we've been here before. This is the time we usually go, you know, go the wrong way. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can make the plays this time. And then they, they were very, very focused. Uh, a lot, you know, it was a little different game, Iowa State, but 
I thought uh, that same focus we had, obviously that was way back in December, but same focus we had in that game we had today. And, and that was, and I, they've made strides with that consistent focus. There's no doubt about it. Playing hard, uh, doing the things that they need to do. It just, it's too bad they took us. I, you know, I told you guys, I told them, I, I you know, I, I don't want the season to end because they've, they've finally started making progress. I told them that a week ago. And, um, but I also want them to finish strong so they feel good about it. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Travel safe. Yep. Thank you. Next question to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, I know you touched um, a little bit there on Selton's defense. Mike was in here and compared it to uh, basically as good a performance as he's seen in his time here, whether that's been Barry or, or X or any of those guys. Did, did you feel like it was on that level? I mean, it was pretty good because Nimhart's good and he frustrated him. He stayed in front of him. He was physical. Coach, uh, I said, Coach Southwell challenged him. We talked about getting into him and not going under ball screens. And, and then our, our big guys did a good job of being at the line of the ball screen. So they didn't, he didn't see space. He didn't see opening. And then we made him, you know, force kind of the issue, especially as the game got late. Um, and then when, you know, they, and, you know, he also switched and did some switching things that we had prepared for. So they were, they were locked in um, in a lot of ways. And then, as I said before, I, I, I keep telling them, if your mind's in the right spot and your heart's in the right spot, good things happen for you. And guess what? Boom, he makes a three. And I don't, I don't know when the last time he made a three was. It, it, I think Texas, maybe the first play of the game. But, um, uh, you know, it, good things happen when your, your, heart and, your heart and mind are in the right spot. You try to let a team in this scenario, because it had been so long since they had won, indulge more in this win than you might with, with a normal team? I mean, we got – we play Tuesday, so um, I know Oklahoma State's in a – we're in a tough game. They had a big lead. Uh, somebody said it was 45-41. I don't know where it is now. Um, uh, so, I mean, we – you know, we'll get back tonight. Then we've got to come back tomorrow and get ready. Obviously, it's a – you know, we a lot of guys play a lot of minutes. Um, you know, it's been a long season. Uh, you know, we've I've tried to shorten a lot of stuff. Uh, today was our shortest shoot-around we've ever had. Um, so, you know, we just, tomorrow it's just, again, meant, it's a mental preparation getting ready for them. If you remember back, it was, we were winning 22 to 17 at Oklahoma. And then that next stretch, it just went the wrong way. And now we got to see if we can make the same improvement we made in some of these other games and, and push them to the limit again also. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks. Thank you. Next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Um, th this has had obviously been a struggle, uh, but and Mike's really been not playing as well as he can. How good was it to see that that Mike, the team, not only got the win, but Mike was such a big part of this? Yeah, I mean, it it it's great for him. Um, you know, I it's, he was one of the last ones. Him and Dave won in the locker room after Kansas, and I. I just and I uh, we've been really careful about uh, social distancing and all that stuff, but I just went and hugged him after that that game because I know how it hurt him, and I know how how, how hard he's worked and how he's tried to be a leader and how how he's had to endure this year. Um, so I, I just I, I'm thrilled for him. There's a now now just keep going. We're we're honoring him senior night on on Tuesday. Uh, you know we made the decision. You know, we hope he comes back, but, um, you know, I know football did the same thing. They honored every senior just in case they don't, so they get their recognition, them and the managers. But, you know, hopefully he will, uh, you know, can, you know, use this as a nice uh, confidence builder, help him relax a little bit and, and have a great finish to the season. You've had some games here down the stretch where you were in them, but you just couldn't quite get that next play or that stretch. And after the game was tied with the double technicals, that seemed to be the changing moment. They had an opportunity, TCU did, to really kind of take control, and you guys fended it off. And and that and that's where we had. I I think I they, Wyatt and Stan told me that they did not score a field goal in the last five six minutes, mm -hmm. and that's probably right. I don't know when that technical was, uh, but what what the time was, but um, it was uh, 
you know, after that, as you said, we really locked in defensively. It, now, the only obviously the only points they scored down the stretch were on, on the free throw line. Good one, Coach. Thank you. Uh, next question to Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, that was a 728 mark on the technical. What was the explanation you got for Mike McGurl receiving a technical? Uh, it's called a, he got into the mess and he got a contact uh, contact technical. Um, you know, I, I don't know if he went in there other than maybe to clean it up, but he got into the um, – I didn't see it, obviously, but I was just worried about our other guys. And we were lucky that it was a timeout because we did, our guys were trying to make sure nothing happened. But, um, you know, you can't go on the court. And, and that, that's, that's probably the one bad rule. You know, you got to make sure you're trying to protect your guys and make sure they don't do anything stupid. But then they're telling you to not go on the court. So, um, but it, uh, that's what, you know, that's what we were told. And our coaches told me what they saw. They saw him go in the mix and, and bump somebody. So about two and a half minutes after that, they take a five minute lead, five point lead, excuse me. And you guys bounce back from that. Just talk about that resiliency and that, uh, ability to show some poise yeah you know they again i i told them you know, we've been here before and when we we've, we've got we were we had a it was a three-point game the first time we played it was a four-point game you know kansas was 30 to 26 we get to those points in games and uh you know again to our guys credit uh, they manned up stayed focused and 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 we had some guys make step up and make good passes and good plays well, I believe they shot 28% in the, the entire second half. Yeah. Just uh, the group-wide effort that that took, and especially, uh, uh, obviously, Selden Miguel. Yeah, there's no doubt. It was good team defense. Uh, our, our, our tags, uh, you know, the, when they ball screen and, and get into the big guy, our second hedgers, we call them, not getting dribbled under, trying to keep them out of the paint. Uh, we had 30 points in the paint. They only had 16. And, you know, several of those were Sam, Samuels on the, the little uh, post-ups. Uh, we decided we were post-trapping them, and then they were kind of, they I don't say picking us apart, but they definitely got a couple threes out of that. And uh, so we decided mid midway through the second half not to post-trap them and then make them make plays. And I guess it was a good good switch up because obviously we, we kept them kept them under wraps pretty well down the stretch. Thank you, Bruce. Yep. Colin Settle. Hey, Coach. Congrats on the win. You kind of talked about Mike and Selden a little bit. I just wanted to get your thoughts on how you thought Nigel played tonight in the win. Well, he had a big shot. Big shot. Hit the, right the play before he hit that three or that uh, – I don't know if it was a three or two, but the little pull-up. Um, he had forced the issue a little bit. I think it turned out okay with us. I, I can't remember. But uh, I, I just grabbed him and I said, next time you come off that, if he's sitting back, you got to jump up and shoot it and play with confidence. And he jumped up and made a big shot. Um, he has five assists, one turnover. Um, you know, they, teams are locking into him. And, and, you know, we put different quick hitters in. But, um, you know, teams are smart. They're just staying with them, connected. I thought he did a nice job of tight curling a few times. Some of our other guys did also. And we got some drop-offs to Davion and Casey, um, which were, you know, big baskets for us. And we hadn't, you know, we didn't do that against uh, in Kansas and a couple other games where, you know, we needed to get into the paint. And that, obviously, that puts a little more pressure on them. Congratulations again, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. And I've also got to ask you a strategy question, but there in the first half when you had both Casey and uh, Davion in foul trouble, I know you said previously you, you didn't really feel comfortable playing Carlton, but you put him in there for some some key minutes. What was kind of the philosophy there? Well, I just, you know, he we had no choice. I, I mean, and again, nothing against Carlton. And he, it was great. He went in there, he battled. He, you know, he just is, he didn't get the practice. And he, you know, we put him in the, a major when we started playing him in December this is a young man that hadn't really practiced at all and 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 he 
you know, he's just trying to catch up with everything. But, you know, again, he goes in there and plays, you know, the three, his three minutes. It, it was important to us. It would have been nice if he gets that little shot down, but he battled. And, you know, when you watch his, his, his like, understanding of uh, his ball screen defense, he's gotten way better. And, uh, you know, he, he, I, I really believe he's going to be a great player uh, down the road. He's got great skills, great hands. Uh, he just didn't get the proper, you know, preparation and practice. Um, and even that back, his back has still bothered him the last um, last couple of weeks. And, and even at halftime, he had to go and stretch extra to kind of get loose again. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, last question to Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Bruce, I'm sure you're as well. You're as aware of this as anybody is that, you know, TCU uh, entered this game as the worst free throw shooting team in the conference. Yeah. You see them. Then they go 20 to 23. <laughs> I, I was going to ask this, like, were, were you just kind of like, have you you got to be kidding me, right? That's kind of yeah. what you were thinking as they kept making shot after shot. Yes. Um, you know, you just, you know, we seem to get, I saw Tyreek Smith from, uh, uh, Texas Tech, he, you know, he jumps up and makes a three. I see him on TV today while we're getting re- dressed. He shoots a three at Kansas. He doesn't make it. And, you know, it just seems like, you know, not everything has always gone our way. Uh, but, you know, even with them making those free throws, we we had to fight our way to get a win. And that's, that's the best thing for our guys. And, you know, the one thing I wanted to just kind of, you know, Kellis had asked, the big thing I talked about with Carlton and Surrey, that it's tough for them to guard the four man because most people don't, um, you know, play so small. And, you know, in this case, TCU plays small ball, spreads you out, Kansas is playing four guards. It makes it really tough for those guys, you know, to be out on the court. And that's where I said I didn't feel comfortable. It's comfortable with them out on the court defending at that four spot. Uh, but, uh, and you know, but as a five, you know, they – they both of those guys can they've made some improvement and and you feel comfortable that they can at least know the defensive concepts from that spot and, and then Bruce yeah. I know we've talked so much about Nigel this year but what, what can you say you know in a, a night he's struggling with his shot you know he comes through there with the three corner to tie it, and then he has another key jumper to push the five there with a minute 22 to go yeah I mean it it it's uh you know I just kept telling him uh, you know, have confidence, believe in yourself. You're a really good player. Um, you know, I don't, you know, you, it's, you know, we've talked about Carlton on our radio show. You know, he said he watched the games last year and he thought, man, I could do this. But then you get here and you get in this league, it's really, really hard. And the same thing with Nigel. This, this is a, this is a tough league. You're playing against some of the best guards ever from Texas to Baylor to Nimhart, you know, Miles. You got you got unbelievable players. McBride next week, Reeves. This is this is a major 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 conference with really really good players and really really good coaches. And um, you know he, it's it's not been easy, but he is he's he stood the test and he's just got to feel good about himself and keep playing with confidence. Hey, and, and, and Bruce, uh, this isn't even a question, but I'll mention that the uh, the highest percentage TCU had shot the free throw line before tonight was in the other game against you guys. So I guess they'd be the best team in the country at free throws. We're not good at that free throw line defense, I guess. <laughs> All right. Hey, congrats, Bruce. Thank you so much. Thank you.